guys, welcome back to my channel, Simone here, and welcome to Vlogmas Day 18. So today I've decided to sort of do a negative video but turn it on its head a little bit, and that is going to be my low rated books that I've actually loved. And so what I've done is I've gone through the books that I've read, and I have, um, gone on to Goodreads and I've ordered them by the lowest rated and I've picked the ones that I gave either four or five stars and I wanted to talk to you about them. I'm going to talk to, about the most popular of the ten that I've picked um, to the most to the least popular so that'll be kind of the bottom um, but yeah let's get started. I personally find it really interesting seeing the difference in um, kind of my opinions and other people's. Um, I might do a highest rated books that I hate um, and kind of do an opposite one so if you want to see that do let me know because I'm really happy to do that and I might do that um, in the new year maybe um, but yeah so let's get started so in 10th place so the most popular one of the 10 I've got is Twilight by Stephanie Meyer this book is a very controversial one and everybody kind of has differing opinions about it um, I actually really quite liked this um, I can understand why people don't I think it is kind of one of those it's cheesy it's not the best written book but I just really enjoy the world I enjoy reading about it and I kind of think that that's sort of the point of the book. I'm actually rereading the series at the minute um, so hopefully you know um, I'll continue to enjoy my rereads but I remember loving the book Twilight the first one. Um, the films I don't love as much but I definitely think that the books are just something different and started off the popularity of the genre as well so I think that's really important and I just loved it. I, I think I gave it four star and I'm kind of okay with that like <laughs> I enjoyed it it was enjoyable to read at the time it's like I said it's not the best book I've ever read but I did enjoy it and this one actually has a 3.58 on Goodreads which isn't a terrible rating um, but yeah it's not the best. So in number nine is Safe House by Chris Ewan and this one got a 3.57 on Goodreads. I think the reason this has got lower ratings is not necessarily because it's got lower ratings as is in general. I just don't think it's got many ratings. It's got, it's got 5,000 or so reviews as opposed to some of the others which um, obviously have many more. Um, so I don't really remember a lot about this book. I just remember really enjoying it when I read it. I gave it a four star. So this is about a man named Rob Hale who wakes up after a motorcycle crash and the first thing he thinks about when he wakes up is about the blonde woman named Lena who was on the back of his bike when he crashed. However the doctors and the police at the scene um, tell him that there was nobody on the back of his bike and that um, there is no one called Lena. They think it's to do with the shock of the accident that's making him think about somebody called Lena because the description of her is very close to his late sister Laura. He then teams up with a private investigator named Rebecca who has some kind of connection to his sister and they try and figure out who Lena is and kind of he's convinced that she existed. I found this really interesting. Again it's not my favourite book I've ever read but it definitely was it went along you know there was there was lots of twists and things happening and it wasn't ever boring I found it really fascinating um, and like I said I gave it a four star because it was interesting it was enjoyable um, I feel like I don't really remember too much about the specifics so I can't really say like specifically the reasons why I loved it but I know I did definitely like it and I remember having that like feeling of kind of enjoyment after I finished it so that's why this is on the list. Number eight is The Lion Game by Ruth Ware and this one got a 3.52. Um, I really enjoyed this book. Um, I know a lot of people are not sure about Ruth Ware in general. I own another one of her books and I've heard lots of things about a lot of the books that she's written. Um, I think there's like The Woman in Cabin 10 that actually might be the one I own, I can't remember. Um, but I think some people just don't get on with her writing style. Personally I really enjoyed it. Um, it's kind of a thriller basically um, around four girls or four women who when they were very young something happened and um, then this many years later they find a body a body is found on the beach and then they have they're sort of dragged back into this town where they lived and when they were at school they used to play this game the lying game where basically they would try and tell lies and get away with it um, and they would like give each other points for the lies that they told and obviously that all sort of spills out and all the secrets start coming out and things like that and I really enjoyed it I, it wasn't like I think it definitely is a kind of an acquired taste her writing in that particular book I don't know about other books because I've only read one of her stories um, but for me I think the writing was definitely an acquired taste but personally I found it really fascinating um I was enjoying like I was 
into it all the way through I never felt like it was boring or nothing was happening I felt like there was something happening at all times so personally I enjoyed it but I could definitely understand why some people don't next up in number seven is the best exotic marigold hotel by Deborah Mogat and this one got a 3.46 when I did a beauty YouTube channel when I first started my channel I actually did a review on this video on this particular book and it was one of my first ever bookish videos I'm pretty sure it's gone now so I will not be linking that below for you but um, this book was really interesting to me I really enjoyed the different perspectives it's got lots of different characters in it um, and it basically follows a group of elderly pe uh, people who are a sort of retirement age who decide to go to I actually forget where it is India I think yeah who go to India to stay in a hotel and they all live in this hotel and it's kind of like a retirement place that they go to and I just liked all the characters in it I think it was interesting it's definitely interesting to think about the fact that your life doesn't end just because you retire and lots of things can happen um, and also it's showed a lot of interesting things about how like people who are older often feel like they're burdens on their families um, and they feel like they're kind of in the way and I think I think that's definitely kind of a thing that as the population now is getting older like people are living longer I think this is definitely something that might start to happen people start to kind of go abroad perhaps and, and enjoy their retirement elsewhere so yeah I think this was definitely an interesting story again quite an acquired taste but personally I really liked it in number six is The One You Love by Paul Pilkington which is the first book in the Emma Holden suspense mystery series and I really liked this one basically this follows a woman who who on the night of her hen party she returns back to her home in London and her fiance has vanished and the body of his brother um, is a left battered and bloodied in her apartment basically and she feels like there's someone stalking her and things are happening and she doesn't really understand why she doesn't know where her fiance is if he did this or if somebody else did it and yeah it was really interesting again it's a thriller it is the first in a series and I didn't yet continue it I might do in the future I actually read this on my kindle and I think sometimes the kind of like free books on your kindle do tend to get lower ratings from people I gave this one a four star I really did enjoy it um again it was kind of like fast paced lots of things happened um and sometimes I like those free books on your kindle because they are kind of like surprise books that you like and I love a thriller so really I can't really lose in that situation. I should say that one got a 3.4 rating. Number five is Soundless by Rochelle Mead. This one got a 3.36 rating and I know the reason why pe some people have given this a very low rating is because a lot of people think that this is really bad uh, disability representation and really bad um, like racial uh, representation it's not my cultural um, experience and I don't feel like I'm sort of al allowed almost or able to comment on that because it's just not my it's not my experience um, I feel like I can talk about the disability representation because as I've said before in videos I am half deaf and I feel like I've got some kind of understanding of that community basically this book follows um, a a village essentially up a mountain who are not able to get down the mountain so they have this system where they send uh, they have like a wire system to the bottom of the mountain where they send down minerals and things from the mountain um, and diamonds and things and then the people at the bottom send them food up and um, everybody in the village is actually deaf um, and they uh, kind of get around that they know what they're doing they sign things and whatever and personally I thought the representation in this was really good like I didn't think that the um, the deaf side of thing was in any way elitist or made anybody look bad personally I thought it was really well done um, again that's my own experience I wasn't offended by it and I know some people were so I think that might be why this book has got low ratings I um, found it really fascinating personally and I really enjoyed that I haven't read many books where deafness is a part of it so I found it really enjoyable and I really enjoyed reading about that so personally it was a good book for me but I know some people had issues with it then number four is The Murder of Billy Joe by Sion Jenkins which got a 3.34 review um, this is about um, this basically is a true story um, Billy Joe Jenkins was um, is a was a foster child or adoptive child I can't remember which um, of Sion Jenkins Jenkins he was the father in the family and he was accused of her murder when she was murdered he was kind of like he was sent to prison and then he was acquitted later on 
and I think the reason why this probably has quite low reviews is because people think this is quite a biased book. I didn't take it as biased. What I did was, obviously it's biased, like it's written by the man who was imprisoned. Um, but the way I looked at it was kind of his story as opposed to him. He did obviously say uh, many times that he did not do this. And whether you think he did it or you don't think he did it, I think it was interesting to hear a bit more about Billy Joe's life for a start. Like, I didn't really know too much about her specific life, and I think that was really interesting. And not only that, but it really helped me to um, look at the legal system a bit more. As I've said before, again, I did a law degree, so the legal side of thing really interests me. And I found, found it interesting that Sion, I think his name's Sion, maybe it's not pronounced that, maybe it's like Sean or Sean. I'm not sure. I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing it completely wrong. I think it's Welsh. Um, but anyway he was talking about the things that he had to do in order to appeal and the the different cases and the different evidence points and that to me was really interesting i think it depends on how you read it if you read this as a um the facts of the case kind of thing you are going to think it's incredibly biased obviously it's written by the man who was accused and then was acquitted um so obviously from his perspective he's only going to go from his side he's not going to be like oh but he might have done it because obviously he's saying he didn't but if you read it as a kind of piece about his life and about the things that have happened to billy joe and the, the horrible things that happened to her I and mean, it was absolutely tra like tragic um and then obviously the fact that he was acquitted and all the things that happened to him afterwards i personally found that really fascinating so that's why i gave this i think i gave it a five star actually um and i know that's probably why it's got low ratings because people think it's biased but i feel like it could not be biased next up is a tiny bit marvelous by dawn french and this one has a 3.22 rating um i have mentioned before that there are i think i've read three dawn french books now and i've not particularly liked uh, the other two that i read but i actually really liked a tiny bit marvelous i thought the writing of it was really interesting it basically follows a mother who is about to do something that's going to potentially jeopardize her family and she has two children she has a daughter and a son both who are teenagers so they're going through very difficult times like obviously in teenagers you're, you're kind of your whole life is changing you're becoming a different person really um and so it's really interesting each chapter is told from the perspective of a different family member and i found that really interesting i loved her daughter's chapters just because i really felt like that was a teenage girl like i felt like dawn french became a teenage girl and it was amazing there was quite a bit of swearing in this which is one thing that i'm not a big fan of but i kind of didn't mind it sort of made sense i mean teenage girls swear a lot so it's kind of you know part of that um i did enjoy this i definitely enjoyed it more than any of the other dawn french books i've read in fact one of them i really hated one of them i thought was okay this one i actually really liked um, I think again it's the writing style that people didn't like and they probably don't love a lot of people don't like mixed perspective like lots of perspectives in a book they're kind of like two or three is kind of a maximum but I think this one had like four or five so maybe that's the reason why this had a low rating but personally I still really enjoyed it in number two is The Abortionist's Daughter by Elizabeth Hyde and this one got a 3.2 rating this one I don't know if it's the fact that it's about an abortionist so it's about it has got some stuff in there about pro-abortion or anti-abortion so maybe this is it's quite a controversial but that possibly is why it's got a low rating this basically is about an abortionist doctor who was found dead in her like jacuzzi swimming pool type thing um and she's been murdered and then there's potentially it's kind of about the case and about what happened but it's kind of um her daughter and her husband have both had arguments with her that day there are lots of other people there are potentially anti-abortion like people who want to kill her and so lots of people could have done it and it's about the police trying to find out who did it basically um i didn't see this coming who did it so it, to me it was a big it was a surprise it was really enjoyable and i did enjoy it again i think possibly the subject matter is the reason and also the name the abortionist's daughter does not particularly make me want to pick it up because it doesn't really sound like a thriller or like a murder mystery it sounds more like it's going to be like a political story so perhaps it's the title but yeah for me this one i still really enjoyed the book and i'm glad i read it and then the lowest rated book that i actually really enjoyed is one i only read um towards the end of this year and that is the red house by mark haddon now mark haddon is the author of the curious incident of the dog in the nighttime which i own but i have not read um and i think it's interesting that this has such a low rating i do understand it though this one only has a 2.94 rating so that's really not very good um basically the first hundred pages of this i read and i told my boyfriend 
I don't understand. Like, I don't like this book, I don't get what's happening. But for some reason, I was compelled to keep reading it. There are some very graphic sex scenes in this, some very kind of graphic violent scenes in this. Lots of, again, lots of different perspectives. It was from like eight different people. Uh, this basically follows um, a brother and sister, Richard and Angela, who um, have families of their own, so there's eight of them all together. Richard decides, because their mother has just died, that he's going to take Angela's family and his family away on holiday together, and they all stay in one house for a week. And it is literally, the book is set into seven chapters, one chapter per day. And that's another thing, I think so a lot of people like shorter chapters, this had massive long chapters, like each chapter was a day, and obviously it's only seven, so there was like it was like 80 page chapters which was just a little bit mad um it was kind of random that like i can say like i feel like it's a weird thing to say but it was very random lots of things were happening and every now and then something would happen and you'd be like but why that doesn't even make sense so i can understand why this has low ratings i was just fascinated to keep reading it and i think that's why i gave it such high rating because for me if a book's keeping me hooked like i'm enjoying it so yeah so that is the top 10 books that have the lowest ratings that I still love uh, off of my uh, off of my reading list. Uh, let me know if you've got any and what your kind of like most controversial book that you love is. And uh, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Come back tomorrow at 5pm for another Vlogmas video and I'll see you next time. Bye guys! Christmas